In this video I'll be demonstrating how to use the Agent SVM plugin to connect Visual Studio 2017 to Subversion. Now this I'm not going to run through the actual installation of the plugin, it's just a matter of downloading and running the installer. It's a fairly trivial exercise. I'm just going to go through the actual configuration after after you've done the install don't run the installation. Um, so the first thing you need to do is start up Visual Studio 2017 and go to the Tools Options section. And inside of here there's an option for Source Control which is right there. You have to actually select Agent SVN as the current Source Control plugin. So now Visual Studio knows about the plugin. You can actually access the plugin through the Source Control, uh, through the desktop, desktop icon, icon or you can also go through the Source Control menu inside of Visual Studio using the Launch Agent SVN option. Now this dialog comes up because it's the first time and then the plugin needs to be configured. It also displayed, a, so we go OK on that. It also displayed a little bit of help so you can actually work through, if you have any trouble you can work through some of the details on how to configure it. But generally the, the installation process is fairly simple so we'll just go straight forward, straight to it. So up, up the top here there's the URL for the actual the plugin that you can get some help there. If you take away the forum option, you'll go to the root folder location for the where, where you'll be able to download the um, the plugin. Um, the top part here are the general options. Uh, for now, we can just leave them as they are. I mean, later on you can try different options and try playing around with it. But for now, we'll leave the the general and the status options, uh, pretty much all the options as they are. The external difference option right here just lets you define it your own differencing tool if you like, if you have your favorite differencing tool. But for now we just use WinMerge. Uh, trunk options, you know, Subversion has the option of actually using a trunk prefix, a postfix, or no trunk at all. We'll just leave it with the postfix option. And this is the one part that the, the message was actually complaining about. We need to actually tell it where the Subversion repository lives. Now in the real world you probably have a Subversion, subversion server or a SVN server. Um, so you'd use one of these other protocols. Um, the way it works is it takes the um, protocol, so let's say that's the protocol, and then for example that'll be some some server, some folder. It combines the two, as you can see in the aux path down, down below, it actually combines the two to find the root location of the subversion server. So at that location, it's expecting to find the repository, right? So when you actually go around to actually connecting it to the real server, you have to make sure that, that those details are correct. But for now, what we'll do is we'll actually go and just use the file local because this is the simplest way to play around with the plugin. It basically will create a, a repo in the local folder. Um, and once you finish, you just delete that folder and away you go. Yeah, so you can't do any damage. You're just playing around with the local uh, file system. Um, and now if I actually go to that folder location, that's right here, you can see it's empty. Um, so when I go apply, the plugin is saying I can't find a repo there. Do you want me to create one? Now in this particular case we will ask it to create a, a subversion repository in that folder location. But if you are actually trying to connect to an existing system, you should never see that dialog. So if you are trying to connect to an existing system and you see that dialog, you've obviously configured the URL incorrectly. So what you should do is then hit no and then go and back and tweak the URL details so that it does find a, a repository at that folder location. So in this case, in this case we wanted to create it, so we go yes. And if we go back to that folder, we've now got a subversion repository. And I've got a little test project here. So here's a little MVC application. If I drag that into Visual Studio, we can see here's our little test project. Um, it has no indication that it's bound to any source control because if I actually go to source control and I look at the bound bindings, you can see there's no it's not bound to anything. So it's it's not it's outside of source control. But because we've told Visual Studio about Agent SVN and because we told Agent SVN about the repo we can now add this to source control. So we just go right click add solution to source control. 
So what that'll do is it'll, it'll work through all the projects in that solution, adding them to source control. So we'll click on that and away it goes. If we actually go back to our folder, we can see that it's starting to show signs of um, source control because it's got these little um, icons. These are all Tortoise SVN icons. Um, Tortoise is definitely worth inst installing because it actually helps you integrate through the um, Explorer window. But if we actually go to the repo for that, this project, we can see that um, what's happened is here's, here's our root folder that we defined for our subversion folder loca subversion repos repo location. And we had our My Web App Location Solution, and we're using trunk prefix, and it's added all the, the solution files to that folder location. So, so there's there's all our files. They're now in source control. Okay, so it's actually it's actually completed that task. Um, if I go back to here, eventually, um, Tortoise will actually tell that that's actually there. There we go. Tortoise now knows that that's under source control. It's got the little tick there. Um, and Visual Studio knows everything's under source control because now we've got our little lock icons here on the file. Now we also have. Um, if we go to our bindings again, source control, change source control, you can see the the solution is now bound to the subversion server via the subversion name and the server binding, the, the project trunk details. So what that basically means is that um, I don't know why it's displaying that. I didn't change anything. I go hit cancel, but we'll go OK. Um, what that is indicating is when we actually configured the server details into the configuration dialog, that those details are basically, you can consider them the default value because now this project is actually bound it, it actually has a memory of those details, so it doesn't matter what happens in the configuration dialog, this will remain bound to that server and to that project for folder location. So the binding is actually attached to the solution, and that configuration, the URL that we put in in the configuration dialog, is just, just a, a default value, nothing more than that. So, so if we open up a file, let's go to the route config file, and we, we, it's, it's actually locked, but if we start to edit it, uh, I'll just put a comment in right here. You can see that it's actually automatically checked the file out, and you can tell by the tick that I've got it checked out. And if I actually go also use Tortoise SVN, go to that URL, let's browse that again. Browse the repository, and it was an app start. You can see it's actually applied a lock to it right there. So, and that's all part of that configuration. We've configured it to, to, to lock files on checkout and so on and so forth. And you, so you can change that behavior using that configuration dialog. But let me check that change in. So I can now go right click and I can go check in. I'll give it a comment. We can see from down here it's now removed the tick item and put it back to the lock. If we go back to the repo browser, if I refresh this screen, the lock has been removed as well. And likewise, if I I'll make, a, make another change, Oops. My second change, and naturally in the real world you'd be making real changes, not just pseudo changes like I'm doing, but if I now check that in as my second change, one of the other options is we can now sort of view history. So, so for example, there you can see it's actually there's my first change, there's my second change. I can actually do differences between the changes. So 
So it's telling me what I did. There's the difference between the first and the second change. Uh, the first change that I made is the difference for the next change. There's my so you can basically do all sorts of difference and see what sort of what what actually happened to that file. Now I can also do things like I can actually check out this file. So what that will do is actually obviously throw throw away those other first two changes, those other changes. So if I check that out, and it's now checked out. If I go back here, all my changes are gone. I've got the file checked out, and if I actually do, a, I can do a compare with what's in source control, what's what's at the root level or the trunk level, and you can see it's thrown away those two changes. Um, now I can actually then also do things like just undo checkout, which will obviously throw away those changes and revert back to the the root, the trunk value. So, and it's now warning me that I'm going to lose those file changes because I've changed the file and I'm, I'm about to throw them away. And I say yes. And there you go, it's now reverted it back to the, the root folder location. So basically, um, you can integrate, or you can, you can, uh, you're interfacing to the um, subversion uh, repository just using the menus that are, that are available from the drop down. You can, so you can just basically just. You, you never have to actually go leave the IDE. It'll it'll just work seamlessly through the uh, seamlessly with subversion through those menu options. So that's that's one way. That's an, that's putting an existing application into um, into subversion. Um, there are also there's also the case where you might create a new project. So if I actually create a new project. Now let's make it a WinForms app. Now again, it's going to be putting it, putting that project into our projects folder, but we have this option here to add to source control. So what that's going to do is actually going to create the project and add it to source control straight away. So we'll let Visual Studio do that. Uh, well, actually, before we do that, we we can actually go to our there's our projects folder. We can see we've got the one project right there at the present, so we'll, we'll go OK on that, and it's going through the process of creating the project and adding it to source control. And as you can see, there's there's our application that is working its way through, and now it's in source control. So Visual Studio has cre created the project um, and added it to source control. And likewise, again, so we can now see that it actually is bound. It's it's it knows about it, and as soon as I start making a change, it'll st it'll check that file out, which it's just done then. So if I resize it, add a button to the, and again, that will have added something to the form designer. If we do a compare of that, we can see it's it's added all those button details. So. And I can check all of that in. My change. And we're done. So that that's basically shows that, you know, once it's a, with a little bit of tweaking, a little bit of configuration, it, it, things basically become quite seamless inside of the Visual Studio. You can. I mean, you, I'm not going to go into all the details, but basically anything that you can do from the source control menu here, all of these source control items are just um, seamlessly redirected to subversion. Um, so it's worth playing around with. As I, as, you, as I said, if you use a local file repository, you can just play around. You, you can get a feel for how things work. Um, and you really haven't caused any damage because you're just doing things locally. Um, and then once you're actually familiar and comfortable with how things work, that's when the process of actually coming to the, uh, if I bring back up the source control, if I launch up the agent SVN, that's when you just need to then re redirect your um, URL to your real, real subversion repository. And everything should behave the same way. Now it's a little bit trickier because you have to just make sure that that URL is correct. If it, but it'll, the the plugin will tell you if it can't see the see the repository location. So, but that that's the the most uh, probably the hardest part, making sure that that URL is correct. And there is that's what the help is there for. So if you use the help button, it'll bring up details on how 
to make sure that, that binding, those binding details are correct. Um, but it's generally not that hard. You just have to just take a little bit of care, and uh, and the and the, and the plugin will will help by telling you whether or not it actually can see a re repository at the, de at the at that folder location. Um, as I said before, if if you actually change these details and you hit apply and it doesn't find a repository, then chances are you've done the configuration wrong. But that was basically just a quick introduction in how to um, get Visual Studio 2017 to talk to Subversion. Thank you.